Hello everyone, welcome to um, Ben Nevis. This is obviously the first um, trip that we've done and the first conference that we've ever done at a mountain. So um, I hope everyone's enjoyed themselves so far. Um, we're about to move it. Good crowd there. Um, we're obviously about to move into um, some speakers, um, but obviously just want to thank everyone for coming along today. Hi, right. uh, I'm Eamon. I'm the CEO of Naked Wines, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about crowdsourcing. So what the hell it is and how we use it to achieve business business success. Um, so just a bit of background on Naked Wines if, if you don't know much about it. Um, it's three and a half years old as a company. We're based up in Norwich with 45 people. And in that time, three, three and a half years, we've recruited 400,000 new customers. Uh, we, we've invested 20 million pounds into independent winemakers. We ship 20,000 bottles of wine a day which is the equivalent of two double-decker buses. Uh, and we did 21 million pounds in sales last year. Um, and we do that uh, very unique business model. Um, and we've managed to carve out a, a piece of the market for ourselves in the face of a lot of competition. Um, and we, what we do to achieve that success, success is do the exact opposite to what the other guys do. Your Tesco's, Majestic's, Waitrose, Virgin Wines, all that sort of thing. So we put our customers at the front. We basically use this kind of crowdsourcing idea to drive our, our whole business. So the key question with wine is, you know, why would anyone uh, pay for a bottle of wine that, from a winemaker they've never heard of, uh, from a wine they've never heard of either? And the answer is, is crowdsourcing. And we would classify ourselves as a, a social media business, uh, a true social media business. The difference being, um, you know, social media website is just a, a website where people turn up and chat, like Facebook, like Twitter, that sort of thing. Social media business, is, which is what we are, is when you get a bunch of people together who don't know each other and achieve something together, what they couldn't have done on their own. So a perfect example is Carmen Stevens, um, which you, you drank up the top. So Carmen <laughs> was, <laughs> Carmen was, um, she's a really talented winemaker down in South Africa. She was the first black female to graduate from winemaking school in South Africa um, and she was working for a premium high-end winery winning loads of awards um, and working for you know a little American boutique winery uh, but she's a really talented winemaker like any other winemaker all she wants to do is get her name on a bottle of wine and be her own boss run her own business we went to Carmen and said oh, we can do this for you it, it took about five months to convince her that you know we weren't lying our heads off <laughs> um, but what we did then is got a bunch of our customers together, 2,000 of them, uh, last July, and said to our, our angels, guys, if you can raise, if, if you can raise 70 pounds now, by a, a pre pre purchase a case of her wines, it'll arrive in six months' time. But more importantly, Carmen can go it alone, uh, be her own boss, and make wine under her own name. In four hours, and why I brought this wine along today was in the time we took to climb this lovely hill. Uh, four hours, 2,000 people got together and raised 120,000 pounds to make Carmen's dream come true and set her up in business. Um, and the result is delicious juice. Carmen uh, can go it alone now. She has her own business. Her little daughter designed the label for her. And tr through our customers, through crowdsourcing, we've managed to create a, a new brand, new label, and you know make a, a woman's dream come true. Um, so that's why I brought this along today and I thought it, it was quite apt. Um, another example we've done recently, we've just launched a new Prosecco, um, so it's a delicious Italian fizz. We got a bunch of our, a small bunch of customers to taste, we got our winemaker to send a few samples out in the post to our customers. We then had an online tasting, they had three blends to, to choose from, from three different tanks. Um, they blended them all together, we all agreed on the blend we wanted, Paolo then blend the wine, made it, customers, we then had a competition to de design the label. So you end up again with a, uh, a product where loads of customers have been involved in actually making it happen. They turn up at dinner parties with their friends saying, check out this bottle of wine. You know, it was my money, that, that's what, that, it was my money which helped make this possible. Um, and finally, you know, it's not just, this crowdsourcing idea isn't just confined to the wine world. So. Um, any market or industry where there's a big gap between a creative talent and the end consumer, there's a massive opportunity for this sort of thing to happen. Um, you know, think artists, paint, painters, um, furniture makers. There's a company called Unbound.com who get customers together to 
uh, help authors write their own books. So again, similar to the wine industry where there's a few people who sit in the middle taking loads of money for, for doing very little. Same in the book industry, you've got publishers who sit in the middle, take loads of money, can make or break an author after they write a book for years and just turn it down like that. Uh, Unbound, you get a bunch of customers together, they'll you know pay £10 for a, a book um, and if they get enough people together to do it, the book's commissioned. The author writes the book, gets the lion's share of, of the profits and again you get an idea of these customers who got together, crowdsourced this product, it would never have been possible without them and that, that gives you a bit of pride and you know uh, if, if you haven't made it happen it, it does, it, it's great like that. Um, I think that's it. Right. Thank you. Thank you.